at all those broken <laughs> broken needle heads sign of all of the hard work look at them hello katie vibes and welcome back to another video my name is priscilla if this is your first time seeing me in this video i'm going to be cleaning my industrial sewing machine i use the juki ddl 8700 and january next year will make it two years since i got my machine every now and again i'll just dust the surface and change the thread but i've actually not gone in to change the oil and open up the machine to really clean out all of the lint and death that tends to gather inside of the machine i noticed my stitch was jumping like two projects ago and I was like, you know what, let me just go in and clean this machine properly. If I struggle too much, I'll grab my husband to help me because it is a metal machine, which means that the head is actually quite heavy. It weighs a bit. So I'll do my best to show you guys everything that I get up to. If you have a similar model to mine and you want to go in and clean yours, I'll show you what the before and the after of the cleaning process looks like. If you do enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and let's get into tidying up my machine. <laughs> Before I get into any cleaning, I'm going to make sure I turn off the power and unplug the socket from the wall. And I'm going in here to just remove everything from the surface of the machine. So all my bobbins, all my pins, these things I normally need when I'm sewing. I just want them out of the way. I'm also going to unthread the machine. So the top thread as well as the bottom thread, which is the bobbin thread, that sits inside this lower panel in my machine. In some domestic machines, it's actually like you drop it from the top, but this one, it kind of like you remove it from the side. So that I'm going to take out because I'm going to need to clean that area as well. I'm going to set these aside and actually get to opening up the side panel first. This process, I'm being guided by an article that I saw online. I'm going to leave the link down below. So I'm going to unscrew these three screws. I'm not the one doing it here. My husband is helping me out. And after removing the three screws, we're able to open up this side panel. And this is what it looks like. There wasn't a lot of dirt in this area, but there was just a little bit of buildup of lint. And this, I would show you a close up of. This sits underneath this bar, like so. And we just went in to just scrape that out using some paper. You can use any tool that you have that will allow you to get all of these dirt, dust and gunk out of your machine. After cleaning out that area, we went up to this particular part. It might be open in your machine, but mine was covered by that black plastic. And once we removed that, I knew it was time to go in to add some oils. Now this is the oil I'm going to be using. It is by Juki and I'm going to link it down below. The oil is typically transparent. And when I got my machine the first time, it was transparent as well. Just be sure you get a, like the oil that goes for your machine. Please read up articles. You don't want to get an oil that would end up swelling your machine at the end of the day. I got mine because I know it's made by Juki and prayerfully everything works well. So after adding the oil to the top hole, we're going in here to close the side panels because we're done cleaning and oiling that area. Then we can focus on the other parts of the machine that need our attention. It is worthy to mention that you want to ensure that the screws are nice and tight once you've closed everything up. You don't have any loose screws shaking or anything out of place. Once those places were closed up, we went in to lift up the machine head and this is where the main oil of the machine actually sits. You can see the build up of like dust, debris, pins in there. I don't even know how pins got in here, but this I would say is the main part where like the cleaning and the proper work is because it's been tucked away for almost two years so i know it's time to go in and actually clean this out and change the oil as well with the machine head tilted towards the back like this i have access to the bottom which is where a lot of the dirt lies i'm just removing all of the pins that have found their way down here broken needles dust thread and i'm just going to try and get this as clean as possible so i know i don't have to do this process again for another couple of years How the pins even find your way? Oh, look at all those broken, <laughs> broken needle heads. Sign of all of the hard work. Look at them. 
the needle heads that were broken. That one, that one. Using the kitchen towel, I'm just wiping this bottom bin area that sits underneath the bobbin holder. This part does not have any oil, but there was a lot of dust there. You can use a microfiber towel or any rag that you normally use to clean your machine. I'm going in around the bottom area that had a lot of dust. And where the bobbin holder is, it was really hard to reach with the paper towel. So I'm using this brush, this brush I would use to actually clean my overlocker. So it is like my cleaning brush for my machine. This allows me to really go into tight corners to get dust out as well. Now moving on to changing the oil, there are two ways you can do this. The first way is to unscrew this large screw that allows you to open up this hole at the bottom of the machine that we are able to drain the oil out however we didn't have the right screwdriver to remove this so we ended up doing the second method which is using a bottle so if you squeeze the bottle against the base and then release it the oil sucks into the bottle you would need some kind of thick paper or plastic to close the lid while you move the oil into wherever you're throwing it away it's a bit messy but this is what we had and we sort of made it work. After draining out the oil, we wiped down the, the bin or the base before adding in fresh oil. Now there are clear lines at the bottom that tell you how much oil you need to put low and high. So I kind of like poured enough oil till it was between the low and the high mark, which is kind of like medium. And as you can see, the fresh oil is clear or transparent compared to the one that I just drained out that was yellow and had a lot of like dirt and debris inside. Once the oil was in there, I went in to oil the bobbin holder, which is where the bobbin would typically sit and that part tends to rotate a lot. Once we're done cleaning and changing the oil, I'm closing up the machine like so by just pulling the head towards me and there are these holes that sit on the bed of the machine itself and using this eyedropper tool i'm just going in here to add some oil in there once the oil was in place i know i'm done oiling the major parts of the machine that need oiling now this last section of the video is optional but i just went in to clean like every nook and cranny removing dust random threads stains because once I get really busy and really into work, cleaning is not something I have the time to do all the time. So this was just a perfect opportunity to get every part clean. Like this is where I'll typically roll the bobbing of the machine. Let me know if you'd like to see a whole separate video on how that works. And I'm just wiping around that area or dusting off the dirt that is typically trapped in all these corners and my fingers cannot even reach. I'm using this, my cleaning brush to dust it like so. And I'm going to wipe down all of the surfaces using a surface cleaner and a microfiber towel this would allow me to remove any oil drops that got caught in the cross action when i was changing the oil it also me to remove any dust on the surface of the machine on the body itself on the table i'm cleaning around the legs around the side around the wheels this one i'm just like giving the machine like a fresh wipe down typically around corners that honestly i just forget to clean so this was such a good excuse to actually get this machine nice and tidy especially on the all these under areas that you know where your legs would typically say that your mind you don't even go to clean dust tends to collect there as well so i'm just wiping around that area not forgetting the pedal which allows me to actually power and use this machine because it's an electric machine once everything was wiped clean i know i can go in and organize the bobbin area which is on the side now i'm just going to put the bobbins back in there you can put the bobbins in a separate container if you have one i don't have one at the moment i might get one in the future if i find something that i like that helps me to organize like my bobbins and my sim ripper that i like to sit on the surface i'm going in to organize my threads as well because the magnetic dish i had just had all of the threads and all of the the tiny snip cutter everything was just kind of mixed in there so i'm going in here to just organize everything so it's nice clean and tidy and ready for my next project but with that done i'm done cleaning this machine i hope you guys enjoyed this clean with me oil my machine with me video if you did give it a thumbs up comment any video ideas you have for future projects and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye